Welcome to our online service here, brought to you from Holminster this Christmas tide. And today we're celebrating the feast of St. John the Evangelist, the writer of the fourth gospel. And of course, John wrote that beautiful prologue at the beginning of his gospel, talking about the light coming into the world. And as we continue to think about the light of Christ in our world, from John's Gospel. We begin by praying the Psalms, Psalm 117, talking about that light coming to the nations. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Extol him, all you peoples. For great is his steadfast love towards us, and the faithfulness of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. Hear what St. John says. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
Lord Jesus, you are the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came not to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Saviour of the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So in this Feast of St. John, let us pray. Merciful Lord, cast your bright beams of light upon the church, that being enlightened by the teaching of your blessed apostle and evangelist, St. John, may so walk in the light of your truth, that we may at last attain to the light of everlasting life, through Jesus Christ, your incarnate Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The reading is taken from the Gospel according to John, chapter 21, beginning at the 19th verse. Then Jesus said to Peter, follow me. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? When Peter saw him, he asked, Lord, what about him? Jesus answered, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? You must follow me. Because of this, the rumour spread among the believers that this disciple would not die. But Jesus did not say that he would not die. He only said, if I want him to remain alive until I return, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. Thanks be to God. A word of prayer. Thank you, God, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you came. Holy Spirit, won't you teach us more about his wondrous name? In his name we pray. Amen. If you have children in your house, no doubt the storm hit on Christmas Day. And you're coping now with the downside, the aftermath. Even if you don't have children with you, I hope you were able to celebrate Christmas Day as something really special. But now you still face clearing up and putting away. But perhaps you keep the 12 days of Christmas before tidying everything away until next Christmas. Some of you may even dread that the Christmas turkey will drag on that long. Why do they call withdrawal symptoms as going cold turkey, I wonder? Anyway, at the very centre of Christmas is Christ, God's gift to us. The celebration of the birth of Jesus, Son of God. But for our Bible passage today, we have jumped forward somewhat from the birth story to after his resurrection to see the consequences of the gift for those who are close to him. Those disciples, particularly here, Peter and John, who were with Jesus through his life, witnessed his death, and are now experiencing the presence of the risen Jesus. As disciples, Jesus taught them, modelled and moulded them, 
knowing each one as an individual with individual characteristics, strengths, weaknesses and traits. And for his disciples, he had individual plans too as to how they would live out that discipleship, their belief, their faith and their hope. Our passage was recounting what John himself said about this matter. Did you note that John commented that what he writes is trustworthy? He speaks as a witness. I know witness statements vary in detail, but if we consider what we've witnessed, lots of different things, but comparing notes, these would fill, still be lots in, in common. We have witnessed almost a full year of pandemic with COVID-19, but with varying experiences. We've all been subjected to varying states of restrictions on our normal life. Lockdowns, watching infection rates rise, fall, rise again, etc. Watching as the world goes by, seasons changing. We've tried to do what we can to help and to keep safe. Our hopes have been raised as vaccines have been announced and begun to be delivered. Our circumstances, we would no doubt agree, are certainly different this year, but miraculously, the Bible still can and does have the potential to speak to us. When you hear or when you read a passage from scripture, I wonder if you ever feel drawn to one particular aspect one sentence, one thought, one phrase, or one saying. It sort of stands out to you as being particularly relevant. There was that feeling for me to today's passage. Right at the opening, when Jesus turned to Peter, he commanded Peter with just two words. He said, follow me. John witnessed it too. It's like Jesus turning to you and to me, saying to each of us, just follow me. Speaking into whatever circumstances that we are in. He is asking each of us to be his disciples. What that meant in its working out in the life of Peter and of John was different in many ways. We can think of Peter as the great shepherd of God's people. We can think of John as the great witness, each living out their belief, their faith in obedience to God's call on them. It's a very personal claim that God is making on each of us, not to look over our shoulders at others, at what it may mean in their life, Peter drew that comment from Jesus in the what about him over there question and Jesus told him never mind the task that is given to someone else your job is to follow me as this calendar year draws to a close we can maybe begin to start thinking ahead well, let the Bible help you in that. Give God time and space to speak to you through its passages and pages as you seek to find out how your discipleship follows Jesus and what it means in your life. I'll leave that with you. Jesus said, follow me. So be it. Amen. Let's come to God in prayer. The waiting of Advent is over and you, Lord, are with us. Emmanuel, son of Mary, son of David, Messiah, Jesus Christ. And so we raise our prayers to you, our Lord and Saviour. Jesus Christ, wonderful counsellor, 
you order all things with your wisdom. Help the church here in this city and this nation to reveal the mystery of your love and fill all the church with the spirit of truth. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In him I trust, in him I trust. Jesus Christ, mighty God, who led the wise men and before whom they knelt, give humility and wisdom to all who govern and lead them in the way of justice and mercy. Jesus Christ, worshipped by the shepherds, give peace on earth to all who are oppressed by war or terrorism. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In him I trust, in him I trust. Jesus Christ, everlasting Father, born in a stable to a human family, give courage to all families and especially to families who are homeless or who live with the threat of homelessness. Be with those who fear for their lives and those who have left homes and families this Christmas. And be with those separated from family at this time. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation. In him I trust, in him I trust. Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, for whom the angels sang, Give the song of the angels to all who weep, to the sick and the lonely, the aged and the dying. Give the song of joy to all who are now on the road to recovery and recuperation, and the song of thanks to all who helped them on that road. The Lord is my light, my light and salvation, in him I trust, in him I trust. Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, whose radiance filled a lowly manger, give the glory of your resurrection to all who rest in you and the reassurance of your presence with all who mourn their passing. Jesus Christ, whose star guided the visitors to your birth, guide us as we continue through the season of Christmas and be present with us as we continue to celebrate your holy birth. Merciful Father, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Rejoicing in the presence of God here among us, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us uh, online this morning as we worship the Lord together, but in a new way. We're having a bit of a, a break uh, here at the Minster, and so we're, we're closed over the Christmas period uh, for personal prayer. But we'd encourage people to, to look up the, the Church of England's Comfort and Joy resources. And you'll find their 
videos and prayer reflections that you can follow to join in with our prayers during this Christmas season. We're open uh, next week on the 3rd of January for um, our Sunday morning Holy Communion at 10.30. And again, please encourage people to book through our website if you're going to come to that in person. And then the, the following week on the 10th, we'll be um, reopening the Minster for services at 10.30 and our 3.30 service on the 10th of January. Also remind people if you're able to, to uh, continue to give to the work of the ministry here at Hillminster as we um, respond generously to that light of Christ which has come into the world and we respond with everything that we have. So as we await a new year, and hopefully a year without quite so much trauma, let us pray for God's blessing upon us. Grace from the Eternal Father be with you. Grace from the Word made flesh be with you. Grace from the Spirit of Truth be with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. So I hope you're having a, a blessed Christmas and wish you all a happy new year.